Welcome to the Colorful Creativity Podcast. My name is Caroline and this is episode 88. You can find me online everywhere. It's Caroline, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Ravelry, The Works. I have a new webshop in the making and it will be at colorfulcreativity.nl. You can subscribe for a newsletter and uh, then you will know when we will do the big opening. And there is a Ravelry group in the group section on Ravelry and it is the Colorful Creativity Group. Welcome everyone, welcome to all new viewers. I hope you like it here, stick around. Maybe subscribe down below so you get notified for every new episode. And welcome back to all returning viewers, of course. I'm very happy you are spending some time of your day with me. Well, it's been ages and it feels a bit awkward. Even putting on the makeup felt awkward. I was like, Ugh, I haven't worn makeup in ages and only just a little bit of lipstick for a photo shoot here and there and then taking it off right away because my face was already hot enough from a very big heat wave here. We had 40 degrees Celsius, 40.2, I think that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Seriously, it was a heat wave record. We've never had that much, uh, that high temperature ever in the Netherlands, so it was not fun. Living in the east of the Netherlands means it's a little bit hotter than in the west at the seaside. So it was horrible here. We didn't have any rain until yesterday. And well, hopefully later today there will be a little bit of rain. But for now I hope it stays dry because that means I can leave the door open and record this podcast. Hopefully before the rain starts. So news laia update laia is over there sleeping and doing a lot lot better it was quite a roller coaster and i just did not have any energy left to record a podcast and keep you updated uh, besides what i was saying on instagram and to be honest every time i said oh we're cautiously optimistic and it looks like it's going well two days later she would be worse or she would stop eating she would stop drinking again uh, if she started it already yeah come show yourself that's binks not laia laia is really sleeping um yes there he is um so yeah, I just, in the end, I started to sh say nothing because maybe that would mean that it would be better. Um, it was twice a week to the vet until last week. This week we haven't seen the vet yet. It is Thursday, so we're almost there. Um, but no, we're seriously optimistic that this time we're done and she's finally over it. Last week on Wednesday we went to the vet and it was uh, for an x-ray, at least the, the doctor decided at that moment uh, it was time uh, for an x-ray to see what's going on on the inside. Because the prednisone, the second shot of prednisone didn't work that good and uh, yeah, she just didn't want to eat and we had to force feed her all the way. But she's eating by herself now. She's not losing any weight. So even if we don't see her eat, we know she eats because otherwise she would lose weight. Also, she drinks because we can do the skin test where you pick up the skin and if it stays upright, it's not good. <laughs> and if it just goes back right away, then it's all fine. So I see her drink regularly. Uh, in some places and some days she's always hiding her drinking she just goes upstairs and drinks probably because her brother doesn't bother her then because they're not 100% friendly yet but I am okay with leaving the house for an hour or two and leaving them alone together they still sleep with us which means that I am still tired as fuck because they have to sleep with me and I just can't sleep with them because 
every hour or two they would start to wash themselves somewhere and nudge me where they are lying in my armpit between my legs it's just exhausting uh, probably tonight we will put them in their own room together and see how that goes I'm a bit anxious for that because the last time we tried Laia immediately stopped eating and drinking the day after so fingers crossed people fingers crossed we already survived almost a week with her eating and drinking on her own. So that is the lie update. Then we will start with all the knitting and spinning because due to this whole situation, all my plans for Tour de Vlies got cancelled. And all my vlog ideas for Tour de Vlies also went down the drain with it. But hey. I have a very long episode, probably for you guys, where you can see what I have done. First, uh, I have a finished object and you have not seen anything of it yet because, well, I knit this in almost two weeks. Yeah, I cast it on on the 9th of July, I think, and I cast it off on the 24th, I guess. So let's say two weeks for a tea. Say what? Yeah, she did it again. Knit a tea in two weeks. Apparently, I am a garment knitter now. That was outside. The neighbor was knocking over something probably. This is a test knit and the working name for it was the summer tea but it's gonna get a new name and it will be launched tomorrow the pattern is by charlie button and probably there's gonna be a package now here you can see the example could be a package for the neighbors and i just heard the bleep that's fine. We'll just continue until the doorbell rings. Um, I fell in love with this when I saw it on the Fat Test Knitter Instagram uh, that she was looking for test knitters. I know her personally because I met her at the Knit Tea Retreat last year and she's a fabulous designer. You can find her as Yarn Ambassador on Instagram. Um, this is a very loose gauge a summer tunic tee with a split hem and it is knit from the bottom, bottom up and I was like I have the perfect yarn for it can I do it in a fade and she was like yes go for it um, so here it is this is a set of mini skeins I dyed I dyed four mini skeins of each color and it went horribly wrong. It was meant to be a sock set from the shop, but yeah. This is Stelina yarn and I killed all of Stelina due to me getting sick the day I died. I was dying and after that I got a migraine so I left it in the acid water way too long and all the Stelina was gone so I was like I can't sell it. And then dying, uh, adding some more speckles. Yeah. I added too much for the little mini skeins. I added uh, enough for big skeins. And this is a neon bleeder. So I was like, nope. These stay here until I find a perfect project. And this was it. I used three, almost three mini skeins of every color. And I think this is about 250 grams. I knit size 50 inch. It came out a little bit tighter because I really would like a 4.25 millimeter needle. Uh, five millimeter was way too loose. Uh, 4.5 millimeter, I mean. And 4.0 gave me a little bit less than the gauge uh, should be. I was like, I'd rather have it a little bit negative eased and not too see-through because I really like how the stitch definition is in this gauge. 
So yeah, I knitted on four millimeter, high, high sharps. And I love it. I absolutely love it. The pattern will come out tomorrow. I will also put in some photos. I have already done the photo shoot. And uh, yeah, tomorrow will be the day where I put them on Instagram. So if you're watching this early, then you have a sneak preview. I will update the description so I can add the right name for it. I have seen some uh, iterations of the name in the Testnet uh, channel. So I'm not sure which one it will be. Now, it's nicely folded up. I kept it in plastic so nothing would happen with it. and It would stay clean. And uh, I wanted to show it to you while it was still pretty and clean and non not worn. I only just put it on for the photo shoot and then took it off right away because it was way too warm to wear it. It was like 31, 32 degrees that day and it's like, no, no way I'm wearing wool. Uh, it is merino nylon and Stelina, by the way, not just Stelina, but yeah, it's woolly wool. So that is that one and on to whips. Let me start with <clears throat> my sheepy bag. In here is my Ripple Bralette by Jessie May Martinson of Jessie May D Design. There you have it. There it is. It grew slowly but steady. It's growing. Um, Oh, that is on its way for a big yarn bar. That's better. Um, I have this now because I need it a little bit longer than the pattern calls for. Last time I was about here at this marker and I have tried it on. I need five inches on top of the marker before I can start the rest of the body. Um, I like it a bit longer so it is like halfway like this below my bra band and covers my belly a bit more and when I don't wear a bra I would really like it to not just get under it. Um, Probably other women with big boobs know that. If you put something on, on the back it's fine, but at the front it's just peeping just a tiny little bit under the boobs and when you move it will just flop over and it doesn't feel nice. So I was like, I'm gonna go for a long body so my boobs will stay in. And you have here the one by one twisted rib and I don't want them to come in this part. I want them to stay in the three by three rib. Also, um, because the gauge I had was too loose for me, like this three by three rib is super stretchy. Uh, I mean, this has to fit me. Yeah. Um, and it really does. Uh, but I went down a needle size. The pattern calls for a three and a half millimeter and I am knitting this now on a 3.25 millimeter. And that feels a bit sturdier and I love that. So high, high, sharp interchangeables so I can add a cable and try it on. It's really nice and easy. The yarn I'm using, Squirm by Undercover Otter. I started with Jello and I am now working with Hayride. It is a Halloween exclusive. There you can also see the yarn content and Undercup Otter. There we go. My friend Petra from Amsterdam. Seriously, pleasure to knit with this. Um, 
not during hot weather. I'm just not a wool knitter when it's warm, apparently. I only like it when it's a bit cooler. Like, I can knit with it at 30 degrees, that's fine. But 40 is a bit much for me. I like something else better. And for that, I have in my fondant fiber, handmade by Deb bag, my second peach comber tea. And I have joined in the round, as you can see. Last time I showed it to you, I was still knitting flat and I think I saw in the video this color already. I'm not sure if I was at the front or at the back. I'm sorry about that. It was the time I had to put Binks in a t-shirt, so I don't fully remember. But now I am knitting around. I have some modifications on this one. I have uh, done a less uh, a not so deep neckline, I guess, um, because my mom also is knitting this and her body is already finished, so I'm way behind now. But I had to help her with the neckline. And that meant that I also went for a less deep neckline. It feels weird, those words together, but I don't know how to say it otherwise. Um, yeah. Normally the neckline would be on the color change and in this case uh, you have to knit flat for another, I think it is about 12 rows, 10 or 12 rows and then you have the neckline a little bit higher and then you join in the round. Um, so the armhole is the same. Um, the other modification is that I am doing a different color every uh, row. Yeah, it's not a row, it's a, 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 a stripe. The pattern originally goes for a stockinette and a reverse stockinette stripe and then you change your color for another stockinette and a reverse stockinette stripe. I'm doing all stripes stockinette and I am changing colors every stripe. And this will be a rainbow tee. And here are the next colors. Also put away safely in some plastic bag. And I reuse these with yarn a lot. So I pack everything in plastic so it stays clean. The next one will be dark red. And then we're going to pink and purple and blues and greens. I'm looking forward to that, but for now, I'm knitting on something else. All the yarn I'm using is Catania, and it is very deep stash from way back when I used to crochet those blankets. I used to crochet. Yes, I used to crochet. It's been ages. Um, yeah. Let me get the original to give you the idea of how it looks. I haven't worn it yet because it was just too hot and Miss Leia... Um, well, I wore it for probably 10 minutes and then Miss Leia caught in here because she was wearing a cone of shame. And yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna put this off because it's a shame if it, <laughs> it gets wrecked. I just hate it when knitwear has snags. So. This is the original. You can find some really nice photos of it on my Instagram now. The pattern was published this week and is now for sale on Ravelry. There is a 20% discount still. Um, the pattern is called Beachcomber. There are some more Beachcomber patterns on <laughs> uh, Ravelry. Um, but you can find it if you go to my project and you can click through it. Or you can look up Carly Perrins and uh, I will link to her uh, Instagram as well and to her Ravelry store in the description box here. 
The needle size I am using is, let me check, also a 3.25 millimeter. High art sharp circular needles, of course. Um, I think that's it for this one. Let me get a sip of water again. This one usually has a sports bottle, but it makes a lot of noise when I drink. So it's like drinking from the bottle doesn't look that fancy as drinking from a straw. And it saves me my lipstick. Then, or cleaning the bottle, lipstick from glasses and bottle cleaning, I hate that. In my colorful creativity bag. I have a brand new project. Um, since I finished the test knit, I saw a new test knit on Fat Test Knitters of Instagram. Uh, on Instagram. Um, and this one was by Skinnenigans. Um, Skinnenigans is Melissa Alexander Loomis. And she makes some really awesome and inclusive patterns. And that meant that I was like, oh god, I want to. Right away, I saw a small bit of a tank top. I was like, yeah, my needles are empty. Let's go for it. Um, I have to untangle this because it's a bit of a mess. But here it is, so far. This is the front. And I did... I asked for if it would be possible to do a deeper neckline than the original and Melissa so kindly made some extra notes and some calculations and gave me a deeper neckline because the other one was like way up here and I'm, I'm gonna choke. Um, but this one gives me a bit more space to breathe. And then on the back there's this cute little knot detail. Really nice um, I'm not sure yet about the armholes they come like way below my bra so I will have to wear a top underneath this tank top but I think I'll be fine I just have to keep on knitting on my ripple bralette I think it will be very cute to wear a ripple bralette under this one but we'll see I can't show you the pattern because it's really just a word document with the pattern and not the extra stuff and no pictures so that's really not very useful. Um, the yarn I'm using is this colorful sock yarn and yes I'm saying sock. It is the scratchier sock yarn but actually I'm fine with that. It feels great. I am uh, helical knitting this one and that means that I am uh, alternating the two skeins and I keep on knitting until like three. Let me see, I can show it to you. Three stitches before the next one. Then I slip them. Those three stitches, I would knit until here. I would slip these three and then I would start this one and continue here. So you shift three stitches every time. And so far, I really like it because you really don't get a jog or anything. So I'm pretty cool with that technique. I wanna try it more often. Maybe also with some real stripes and not just alternating skeins. Um, the colorway does not have a name. It was an experiment of new dyes and they led a lot. That's what you get for trying out new dyes, just throwing it in. Like the other dye you have, um, some new dyes are a bit more heavy than others. They just, um, yeah. Uh, a bit more potent. Probably that's the word I'm looking for. So this one was very potent and uh, yeah, it was bleeding. 
So I was like, yeah, well, I'll keep them myself. I love them because they're purple with yellow and I love those. So yeah. Um, knitting this on a four millimeter IR sharp circular interchangeable needle. Um, again, the, the gauge was almost the same as my previous test knit. So I was like, oh, I don't even have to swatch for it. That is awesome. Now I just have uh, the A-line uh, body to knit. So mindless stocking it in the round for perfect TV knitting. Uh, and the other top, of course, is also at that point the, the, the second beachcomber. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of mindless stocking it. Then we are at the Tour of the Fleece and spinning. I have a nice big bag here and first I'm going to show you these two. These two mini skeins um, came off my wheel. I had already uh, spun them a while ago. I three plied them, I think, H and Ply. Um, this is Kobo by Fox, the fiber I really disliked and I sent to my friend Angela. It's scratchy as so, this one is BFL, which was a lot softer, but came out a bit scratchier as well after applying probably too much twist, which is okay, I'm used to that. Um, it'll still find its purpose. It will be okay for something funky where you just add a little pop of extra bright color. And this is part of my fiber study, so yeah, if I'm gonna study something, it will be uh, good to know these things of all the fibers. I will say, I think Merino is still softer than BFL. Even though BFL can be very soft, for me, Merino keeps popping up softer than BFL every time. Please don't let me be the only one. Then, let me check. I have the card somewhere, I think. Here it is. I had a BFL alpaca blend from Das Monschaf and it is 60% BFL and 40% alpaca. I think, yeah, 40% alpaca. And it was in a purple and green and teal. And here it is spun up. And this is the big skein. I had, I have a two ply here. I broke the braid in two pieces. I spun them a little bit thicker than I'm used to, but I just let the fiber guide me. Um, I think I did this before to the fleece actually, and I only had to ply it, but now I'm not 100% sure. No, I had to spin a little bit and then ply it. And then there was something left on one of the two bobbins and I made an Andean bracelet and I could two ply it from that bracelet and have this little mini skein for the last bit. This is somewhat of a gradient. Uh, you can't see that in a skein, that's unfortunate, but it really goes from the purple to over the greens to this tealish color. Next up is a project I planned. I um, took out my drum carter because I was like, I have to use that thing more because otherwise it's not worth its place in my house uh, and I should sell it. But I used it and I did some interesting stuff with it. I have here the first of merino and a little bit of sparkles. I carded the yellow, orange and red merino fiber with my drum carter, a um, wool maker's hero, um, and then spun it. I only carded it once so it was like layers of the color still visible. <sighs> yeah, what can I say about this? 
I had planned to ply it together with another bed. And that bed was this one with yellow and white and red naps. It would have been cute, probably, but I really didn't like it, this bed. Um, I did not have fun with all the naps. They just jumped away everywhere and, well, they still keep falling out. I washed it already and it kept falling out in the water and kept falling out when I snapped it and it kept falling out after drying. So me and nips are not friends. So I decided to keep this a single and uh, someone was jealous on my nip yarn and I was like, you can have it. I will send it to you for, for just shipping and here you go, um, random act of kindness. Please be happy with it. I added two other mini bats I made and she had her fun with this. And because she said, I'm gonna keep it a single, I was like, ooh, that's an option as well. So I kept it a single and I just didn't do anything else with it. This one was on one bobbin. So that meant I had to ply it with itself. And I thought I would be smart put it on a toilet paper roll, make a cake, and do it from inside and outside at the same time? Not smart. Seriously, not smart. It was one hell of a yarn barf. We had to uh, snap it off. It On the inside it was all tangled. It didn't come out anymore, so I had to break it up in pieces. Um, we had a cake where I very slowly could ply it and I had to make two Andean bracelets because the first one snapped on me <coughs> so I had to do a second one now I have a two ply of merino sparkle yarn in this color, color red yellow and orange and it's fine it has barber poles in it it's very cute and it will just wander in my stash and not sure for what I'm gonna use it. Might someday do something gradientish. Or maybe a rainbow yoke. Um, I haven't given it tags with how many yards or meters or grams it is, but it's a rough DK weight. So, and this one is more a worsted weight and one thing though, this is not a super uh, fine merino. This is, I think, a normal merino, but it is still soft. And this BFL alpaca is also still soft. I can do it. I can spin soft yarns. And <coughs> this one is the proof. This is a rainbow braid well it was a rainbow braid hand dyed by me with some leftover dye and it was a merino and tussa silk blend that i dyed and i didn't cover it all so it was with a little bit of white it wasn't really super bright <coughs> more a pastoral um just look at it. I'm just gonna let you admire it. This is an Aaron weight. And I am absolutely in love. What I did here is spinning it across the, the front. Um, I just took the braid. I split it in two because it was mirrored. And then I started spinning back and forth on the front of the braid. So I would keep all the colors together. It is some getting used to. It was a challenge, but it was really lovely. And it worked out actually pretty well. It was a bit thicker than I wanted. I wanted to make it a three-ply fingering weight. Then I thought, oh, maybe I can make it a two-ply. But I know myself, um, once I start spinning, I go thinner and thinner. So in this case, I had to 
make sure I wouldn't, which meant that my second bobbin was a bit thicker <laughs> than the first bobbin. So a two ply would have been, uh, would have given me a lot of leftover and a lot of barber pole instead of a nice combination. And also the second one didn't quite match the first one after all. But this is, well, not a real gradient, but it is a bit of striping. It's a really nice effect. And I think I have to look for a sweater that has a colorwork yoke where I can use this because I, I can imagine that this would be very awesome. I've been looking like things like um, the Gaudi sweater by Julie Nitz in Paris, but it's not really size inclusive enough for my standards. And I try to um, only use patterns now that go up to 58 or 60 inch or can be worn until 60 inch, depending on the ease. <coughs> so. I think that might be the most interesting also for my viewers and um, I can squeeze into a size 46 if I want to or just change my gauge a little or add a little extra uh, on the sides, uh, one repeat extra or something. But I don't want to do that anymore. There are so many amazing uh, designers who go up to size 60 or even bigger that I really want to support them and I just want to put my money where my mouth is is that the saying I just want to support the good ones and not the designers that say a 2XL is a size 46 say what <laughs> it can be a size 46. I've also seen XL being a size 40 and I was like, what the actual fluff. So yeah, um, like I said, I also used my drum carter during the Tour de Fleece and I made more bats. I also noticed that I like spinning from the braid a bit more than spinning from a bat. I'm not a woolen spinner, I'm a worsted spinner, so I like tight, round, yarn. These four are all carded three times and there is sparkle inside and this one is carded, these two are, are carded uh, two times I think or this is three times that's four times but I wrote it down somewhere. The blue ones I have put up as a prize for the team weaponized mango in the LSG group. We had our own uh, little tour de fleece team and it was so much fun. And then I have these four and there's actually four more coming but I still have to card those. And this has been carded four times I think. The more times you card it the better it bl it's blended. It gets really pretty once you uh, really blend it very well. Um, so yeah. Then the tour de fleece is over <coughs> and I have to go take something from my throat. I'll be right back. I also had to close everything because there were dogs barking and the rain will start in a little bit. So I was like, let's do it now, all in one break. So like I was saying, I have got the spinning book after Tour de Fleece. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to put my wheel away for the rest of the year again. Put it in the attic and not, not see it until the next Tour de Fleece. So I have started a new project on my spinning wheel. This is some porpoise fur fiber. I got in the UK at the Geeky Puffin Knit Palooza. And it is a 100% Falkland braid. It is four ounce. 
and that is 113 grams. And it's always called leaf peepers. And you can see half of the braid. This is the second half. What I wanted to do during Tour de Fleece was a whole lot of different fibers and try some techniques. I'm going to put in a photo of the bobbin because it's still on the wheel. And this is the first half of the half skein uh, braid. Um, I want to do a fractal spin. So I have split my braid in half lengthwise. So you have the braid, that long thing, and you just split it lengthwise. Then the second half, I split it again lengthwise. And that is what I have here. I have already spun, well, I think about half of the half half. This is gonna be very interesting. <laughs> um, like this is one half of the full braid. So this is the full length. And this is what's left of the bit I already spun. There's almost two layers already on my uh, bobbin. And I really like how it's spinning because it's really doing that nice stripy section. It's gonna be a two ply and um, this is the full bit. So those stripes should be twice as long, which gives it that beautiful barber pole and fractal stick effect. I really want to do a three ply and also a fractal for a sock yarn. A true three ply, so three bobbins. Uh, I have only done chain plying as three ply, so I want to do it with this rainbow one. I was like, yeah, I'm going to practice on a two ply first and then do a three ply and see what I can learn from that. So far, I love spinning this Falkland. It's super soft. Um, I hope it's still soft when it's finished because the last time I spun Falkland, it was more like barbed wire. It wasn't even rope, it was barbed wire. Seriously, that scratchy. It's spinning super thin. So it's gonna be probably something lace yarny, which is great because I've never done that before. And I can be proud of that. And what I now have in mind is to do a year long spin along. Well, almost a year, up to the next Tour de Fleece. Um, I have already put a chatter and plan and whatever, everything thread for it in the Ravelry group. It is the colorful spin along and you can use hashtag colorful sal so colorful s-a-l on instagram and everywhere <coughs> my idea is to do one braid every month you can do as much as you want um prizes will probably be there i um yeah well i don't have any yet but donations are welcome for this but also i think i will be making some and uh, dyeing some so just random prizes nothing planned nothing like you have to have a finished object by then i just want to keep on spinning motivate each other inspire each other new techniques uh, be there for questions uh, i don't know a lot of spinning i'm still a pretty newbie so i'm like yeah this might be fun for everyone then. Um, there were also uh, already a few people very enthusiastic uh, when I posted this on Instagram yesterday. So thank you for that. I really love that. I'm happy that my ideas are that I'm not the only one who would want to keep spinning after the Tour de Fleece. And uh, I hope this will help me get through my fiber stash a bit more. I have a lot of fiber and I don't spin enough so i have like two very big plastic containers full maybe even a little bit more 
yeah, definitely a little bit more because my hand dyed fiber is not in that stash. That's in a different thing. So yeah, I have a lot. I have a lot of undyed fiber as well. Um, I always feel a bit troubled dyeing fiber. Oh, and as for the light, it's getting darker. The rain will start in a bit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking about a lot of things because I was so enthusiastic that I just wanted to start right away. Just like I did with my spinning. I didn't want to wait until the 1st of August. Just, I just didn't spin one day and I was already missing it. So yeah. I'm spinning again and I hope you guys will join me for this spin along. Uh, I just put on the light because it was getting so dark. <laughs> um, what I did is I made a coffee account for me and the podcast. If you like, you can donate there and the costs uh, of shipping and prizes and things for the podcast and for Instagram giveaways, etc. I want to pay with that. I, uh, I thought it would be nice to have a way for you guys to support me. I had some questions of how someone could support me and I was like, oh yeah, I have a PayPal, but that's just awkward. But now I have a coffee account. So I have put the link down here in the description box for any of you who want to help out with paying for shipping. Um, with my shop not being open for so long, it is getting a bit tight, so. Um, with all the regular insurance etc costs so maybe some of you want to help out by paying shipping maybe some of you want to help out by uh, donating a prize for the spin along um, just let me know and if you just want to join that's also fine so uh, I'm happy to have you then I also want to do another one um like i said i want to do one braid a month and the plan is to do this one in september this is a three ply or at least uh, a chain ply and just one color this is panda by sweet georgia yarns and this is a 60 percent superwash merino 30 percent bamboo viscose and 10 percent nylon so perfect for sock yarn so I'm planning on doing just a regular chain ply, spin the whole thing and then ply the whole thing. But before I get to knitting sock, uh, making sock yarn again, I have to cast on this. <clears throat> this is hand spun sock yarn by me that I made last year. And if I don't knit with it, I don't know where my mistakes are and I don't know how to change things. So I was like, yeah. I have to make socks first. So these are ready in their uh, Vicky Bird Designs bag to go and to make some nice sock yarn. And to give you an idea for prizes, I just fiddled around because I needed one. I have made an RFI sock. I need my husband for this because I tried to cut off the extra bit of metal I couldn't. It's so sturdy. So he has to cut it, but this is with my handmade glass beads. And look at that. I'm so proud. These are some of my beginner beads. I was like, I, I, it will be fun to use those. So yeah. So this, this part comes off about here and then you have a little hook and you can just hook your fiber through it. Because what I do now is pull it really hard and then the next bit comes loose and then the next bit comes loose and I'm like uh, pulling all the not yet uh, set fiber back. So it's a bit annoying, but it'll be fine. Then it's time for acquisitions. Um, yeah, I wanted to say there's not a lot, but there's enough. It's very yarny and um, yeah, very sweet. Also, I uh, will start with the very sweet one first. 
here is the beautiful card. I'm not showing you the inside because I haven't asked the sender if I could tell who it was from. Uh, I can just say it was by a very, very sweet lady who also watches the podcast, I think. And uh, yeah, it's really, really appreciated. It came when Laia was doing not so well. And it was just because and to make me smile and cheer me up a little bit. I can tell you it worked. I can also tell you I cried because this is just too cute. These are Mo and my stitch markers and they are cats in teacups. I mean, I'm a tea drinker and I love cats. This is just perfect. I absolutely love it. So thank you very, very much. You know who you are. So then the next acquisition, look away. If you are in Undercover Otters, Igor, Clan of Igors, um, Club thingy, whatevers, um, I have to show you June and July because I've been away so long. It's already August, so I always show the previous one in the new month. Um, yeah, this is Targo, June colorway. Uh, yeah, that way around. Uh, it has some really lovely deep shades of red, which I absolutely adore. And this is Manos, the Hands of Fate. And the colorway is reds, blacks, and some deep browns to represent Targo. Yeah. It was, uh, this month's colorway might come across a bit dark and depressing. Part of that is because I have taken a lot of my inspiration from John Reynolds, the actor playing Targo. He was struggling with depression and unfortunately took unfortunately took his own life in October of 1966. He never saw the release of Manos, The Hands of Fate, later that same year. So, <clears throat> wonderful idea behind this. And I will also read this message to you from Petra. Here at Undercover Otter, we are no stranger to mental illness. It has taken me, Petra, a while to find the right balance of therapy and medication, but I'm in a stable place at the moment with my mental health. If you or one of your loved ones is struggling with mental health issues, please talk about it with your doctor or find a local help group in your area. You are not alone and it will get better. I think that is a wonderful message and me not being a stranger to mental health issues as well. Um, yeah, it's been better, it's been worse. Um, it's getting better again. When Laia was sick, it was not the best place for me at that time. So, hence no podcast. I was super tired and super sad and I haven't fallen as far, absolutely not haven't fallen as far as when I was in hormonal treatment. That was really the darkest pit I ever saw. So yeah, I uh, absolutely agree with Petra. Talk to someone, talk to your doctor, get a help group, uh, talk to a friend, please. It will get better. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, leave it there. There are lots of good Instagram accounts to follow for uh, mental health. Uh, um, I, I mostly focus on the body positivity uh, accounts for my mental health, just to keep reassuring that I'm allowed to be there and I'm allowed to take up space. Um, but if you have any suggestions on mental health accounts to follow, 
please do leave them in the comments here or drop them on Ravelry in the uh, chatter thread for the episode to help other people. So, then that was not the only yarn from under cover order because we also have the July clip call away. And that one is Yitch. And look how good these go together. They would fade amazingly, I think. That's one of the things I really love about this club. She really thinks it through um, from start to finish. I think we have a fade going on from January until December. Or at least something that goes as a fade. This one is Mad Monster Party inspired. And the colorway Yetch. Um, the inspiration for this month's colorway came from the colorful scenes shot in Mad Monster Party movie. With a lot of great contrasts and a high use of warm colors, this movie is a feast for your eyes and makes it an endearing story without the subject being tame. I was, in, was inspired by the warm reds, rich purples, and high contrast oranges that can be seen in this flick. So, there you go. But that was not the only one that came this month with the club. There were also some markers. I will show them to you one by one because they are all unique. A mummy. And a monkey monster I think to me this looks like a monkey monster a Frankenstein and then there is this one is that the sign symbol for love? I'm not sure or for rock on I think it's love <laughs> That was also in there. Then I will have to go back to my project bag because one thing I ordered from Undercover Otter is already in use. Oh, this is super difficult to show. Uh, nope, not contrasting enough. Let this help. Yes, that works. A little bit better. This is a gauge boy and the gauge boy is an awesome invention by Petra. I hope you can see that. It's clear so it's really difficult to focus but it is a square to do your gauge watch and down below here is a um, the measuring for your needles, needle gauge, in the shape of a Game Boy. Seriously, you can't make me happier. I have two Game Boys. I got one as a kid and when a friend was cleaning his house, he was like, oh, you want mine? You can have it because my screen is broken. It needs to be glued on again. It just comes off because the glue is so old. I mean, hello, I got that thing when I was a kid. I think I was 10, maybe 12. You can do the math. I don't need to help you there. It's old. I feel ancient because I still have mine and I still love to play sometimes when I get it to work again. Most of the times it just needs new batteries, but uh, yeah. I had some very, very nice games on it. I used to play golf. And I loved pinball with those little crocodiles that would do uh, And I also played Mario and Tetris and oh god, hours were spent on that thing. Seriously, not, not different from kids nowadays spending hours on their phone. Also, I got some extra yarn because I don't have any. And just because I like to support my friend. Um, here we go. 
I got two skeins of pieces. Can you guess my love for purple and yellow? Yeah, it is real. And this, I think, will be amazing in a Zweig sweater. Yeah, this one is come and done. I just have to put a little bit of tape on it again. Um, yeah, I think it will be amazing in a Zweig sweater as the contrast bit. I have to see what color I will dye myself for it. I might even go for a dark, a beautiful navy that's in here with a little bit of purple. I'm not sure yet. I have to get back into dyeing and seeing color. Um, and also got this one, a Screaming Satsuma, because one skein of this is not enough. I know I have one and I want to use it in a uh, sweater, Marl Mania sweater by Stephen West. But this one will be a pair of socks. So yeah. All yarn is uh, squirm based because that's my favorite base from Unicorn Water. It's the same as my soft sock and the same as lots of other indie dyers. Uh, they also call it usually some kind of soft, soft sock, soft uh, fingering, whatever. Well, with that, I finished the whole cart and I guess we're almost at an hour. Oops. Um, yeah, sorry, not sorry. I just had a lot to share. And a lot to tell because it's been a month or so. Uh, plans for next time. I don't have any. I hope to have the shop up and running by then. I am working on photography. All my photos have to be redone. Uh, not per se I have to retake the photos but I have to re-edit the photos because the size is different. And I have to brush off my logos because on Etsy it's nice to have your logo on. On your own website it's just look hideous to have your logo on every single photo. The logo is in the header and it's fine. But on Etsy you don't know how a customer comes in. So if there's no name on anything, they can't find you anymore. So yeah. Also, that way you can ensure that your photos are not being used by someone else and uh, stealing your things. But that's just Etsy. <clears throat> Let's not get into Etsy anymore. I'm just working on it. I have a framework. I have something that I like and I'm pretty sure it will change a million times until and after it's published. But so far I'm working on it. Um, while Laia was sick, I was like, eh, and then I saw a post of the Knit Tea Retreat that they still had some spots left. I'm not even sure if that was last time or this time. Maybe I told it already, but I'll be back in Cardiff and I'll be enjoying some classes. This time I'm taking classes about somatics, uh, somatic shoulders and somatic hips, two classes. Oh, and that's so good because my shoulder really hurts from uh, purling a lot and also from spinning especially the plying because when I spin I just sit and I spin and I don't do anything else and I can sit like that for hours and that's not good you have to take breaks right very that's one thing I know but I'm just when I'm in that flow, I just like to stay in that flow. And it's the same with editing the photos. When I'm in the flow, I'm in the flow. I know my back hurts a lot. And I have a physiotherapist appoint appointment tomorrow again. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm rambling now. And this has absolutely no use and not much info for you guys. So I'm cutting myself off. I hope to see you back soon can't promise anything but uh, yeah have a wonderful time have a wonderful summer uh, I hope you're all doing well uh, drop me a message a note whatever 
and uh, tell me how you're doing. Bye bye!